why this thing's special is to actually get with me and let me know what Sunday you can sing this in the text. If you don't mind or call me, let me know what Sunday you'll be able to sing. It's going to have Miss Maggie coming up and Miss Anna.
if we'd all get in that state of mind of what that song talked about, I, it take my life, it's yours, Lord. I owe it all to you, Lord. I'm the clay and you're the potter. Just make me whatever you want me to be. That's all he wants from us, just to be able to mold us and to make us into the image of his son. And uh, a lot of us, we like that old hard clay that needs a little water splashed on us, brother. We don't, we don't mold very good. We, when, when he tries to mold us, if you, if you take clay and it doesn't have enough moisture in it, and you try to mold it, and you try to shake it, you know what happens to it? It crumbles and it breaks. A lot of us are breaking today because we're not letting the Lord oh, mold us. Right, man. Man. A lot of us are breaking today because we don't yeah. have enough moisture yeah. of the Holy Spirit that's come in our life to let Him mold us into what we, uh, what He wants us to be. And can I tell you, if we're what He wants us to be, yeah. we're right where we ought to be. Yeah. Amen. Right. And uh, we need to let it mold us this morning. And I appreciate that song this morning. Uh, and I, I pray the Lord that uh, it blessed your heart like it blessed mine this morning. Amen. Amen. I didn't mention this while ago in announcements, but man, wasn't it good to be back in Sunday school? Amen. 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 I'm sorry I, I omitted that, but it was good to see you back down in the Sunday school classes and, and learning and uh, taking that discipleship. Uh, I appreciate it so much. It's been a long time coming, uh, but listen, we're going to get back, amen, like we were before. God is slowly getting us that way, and some of you may be sitting there thinking that Preacher, it's still just a mess out here. Yeah, it is. Amen. But we're just going to do church. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. We're just going to do it like we always do. Amen. That's, right. That's the only way we know to do it. And uh, so you come and be a part of Sunday school. It'll be a blessing to you. You'll grow. And uh, you'll, you'll get water. Amen. That's what we're talking about. That water. That's where you get water. Is in that discipleship time. Now, these teachers do a great job. They study their lesson and they prepare. And uh, they'll they'll give you what uh, uh, help you grow. And uh, that preacher to go along with it. So a lot of times, uh, just a few minutes of preaching from an old redneck country preacher that gets the snot and the snort a lot of time ain't enough. Amen. Mm -hmm. To get you to grow. But uh, uh, that that time of <laughs> discipleship in Sunday school with it. Let's you turn in our Bibles this morning. Yes. Who sent that birthday gift for Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday's and anniversary. We didn't do that. Miss Bernice, you had a birthday? Hey Amen. How, how many years? 25? <laughs> 92. Amen. Yeah, Miss Anna had a birthday yesterday. Oh, so Y'all yeah. come on up to the front and let us sing to you this morning. I mean, any other birthdays that we can miss so far? Uh, anybody else got a birthday this morning? Dad had one a week ago. Okay, Brother Tommy. Brother Tommy, I thought he was coming to the Amen. Coming for No, actually, I come up here and I was going to. Ask anybody if they knew what last Thursday was. It was the day before Friday. <laughs> she asked me, and I told her, you know, I'm not going to be out done. You know, like, yeah, it's the day before Friday, and it's actually the day after Wednesday. Anything else you want to say? She said, yeah, it was my birthday. I said, happy birthday. <laughs> she ain't never going to reach me. My aunt will get as old as I am. Never. <laughs> <laughs> what about anniversaries? Does anybody have an anniversary we miss? We want to sing to you. Amen. All right. Well, let's stand our feet this morning. Let's sing. Let's sing happy birthday. Miss Bernice, God's been good to you. Let you see. Let you live 92 years on this earth. We pray that it's been. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Pray that it's been more and uh, thankful for all the Lord does for us. Let's, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday God bless you, happy birthday to you. David, turn your Bibles if you would this morning to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Chapter number one. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number one. I'm going to read just a few verses of the scripture to you this morning and uh, share what the Lord has laid upon our heart. Pray that it be a blessing to you. Pray that it help you. Pray that it encourage you this morning. Pray for somebody here that doesn't know the Lord. They, 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 they hear that call, hear that word that He has for this morning. I'm here to tell you this morning, the Lord has a word for all of us. Right? And what I preach may not be. May get interpreted in many different ways, but the Lord knows what you need this morning, and He's going to send it to you. Uh, the 
Gospel of Luke, chapter number one. I hate to ask you to do it again, but let's stand for the river to the reading of the Word of God. The Bible says in Luke chapter one, verse twenty-six, and in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man who was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Amen. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Height, and the Lord that shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and all his kingdom therefore shall have no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel said, answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called Mary. Listen to this. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Hey, Amen. Right. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this day as humble as we know how. Father, we are thankful for the time of gathering, Lord, in your house. Lord, we, we observe and we honor this time of, of worship together, Lord, today. And we just pray that we, I pray that we would open our hearts. And, Lord, let you come in and mold us and to make us what you have us to be. And Lord, I pray that you help us to worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. Let our ears and our hearts be attentive unto the word that you sent to us this morning. All it takes is a word from the Father, Lord, to change our lives. And, Lord, I pray this morning that you'd send that word that would be the, the, the changing period of somebody's life this morning. I pray that you'd change some things in our hearts and calm some things in our hearts this morning through your word and through your Holy Ghost. God, we need him this morning more than ever. We pray that you just allow him to come and, Lord, lead us and guide us and give us the words that, that are so needed today. Lord, we depend on him. Lord, we don't depend on anything. That we can do in, our, in and of ourselves. God, when we depend on the Holy Ghost to, to teach us this morning and to guide us. We'll follow where you lead. We'll give you the honor and the praise for all that you do. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be seated this morning. You no, know, we're officially, as of this week, entering into the Christmas season. I know that because we got to sing the Christmas song this morning in congregational singing. Man, I love, love those old Christmas hymns this morning. Uh, I know some of y'all have been in Christmas mode since November the 1st. Amen. I mean, I'm talking just as soon as Halloween passes away, y'all go straight into Christmas mode. I'm talking about Mr. Cole, by the way. Amen. She goes into Christmas mode just right away. Starts putting up trees, putting up decorations. And uh, that's okay, I don't mind at all. Uh, but we are truly in Christmas season. The, the month of December is our Christmas season. And it come, what comes along with that Christmas season are a lot of very uh, uh, obvious words that we hear mentioned many, many times during this time of, this time of year. Uh, they're very common. You see them in decorations. You see them strung about and spelled out in lights across the, the countryside when you go look at those lights. You see them on Christmas cards. You hear them in songs. You hear them in carols. You hear all these, these words that we so uh, associate with the Lord and with Christmas time. And some of those words, just a few of them, are one of these is joy. Amen. We sing that song, Joy to the World, the Lord right. Has Come. Can I tell you, I'm glad that we can have joy this morning right. because the Lord has come. I mean, He came into the world as a little baby. He left this world as a, 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 as a, a, as a sacrifice Savior. But can I tell you, He's coming back again as the King of Amen. Kings and right. the Lord of Lords. I mean, that gives me joy this morning. Joy is one of those words. Peace is 
is another one of those words this morning. We say he has brought peace. Uh, and can I say where he brought the peace to? Listen, we can look around this world and it's not very peaceful, is it? There's not peace in our midst, in our carnal world. But can I say, he brought peace between the sinner and God. Amen. Amen. It says when Jesus died on that cross, the intimacy that was between man and God was done away with. And he made a once and for all sacrifice for our sins. And because of his sacrifice that was made, we have peace with God. Amen. Amen. And we have peace with God. We can also have the peace of God this morning. Not only is peace one of those words, but faith. Uh, the Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, hope. Hope is one of those things. We have hope this morning because Jesus came into the world and, and, and took our sins and died on the old rugged cross. Listen, love is another one of those, those words. There's many different words. And all the words that we associate with Christmas time and, and the time of peace and of joy and of happiness and all. They all come to us because Jesus came. Listen, it's not just, it's all because he came into this world. The, the Savior, Jesus, brings all these attitudes and all these, these sentiments into our hearts. And it's not just in Christmas time, but it's every day. It's because he came. I was reading this uh, in Isaiah chapter 9, the, the prophecy over in the Old Testament that Jesus would come. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Boy, I'm yeah. glad that there's some good names for our Lord and Savior this morning. He, he is wonderful. He's Counselor this morning, Brother Clyde. I'm thankful when I need somebody to talk to, when I need somebody to counsel my heart, he's there to listen to me. Amen. He's right. there to lead me and to guide me. He's a mighty God this morning. Listen, now all that we're going through this day, he's in control of it because he's mighty this morning. Amen. He's everlasting. He's from, uh, from beginning to end and everywhere in between. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. The Bible says he's the great I Am. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Rose of Sharon. Listen, he's the bread of life this morning. He's our chief cornerstone. He's the good shepherd today. Listen, he is all those things. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. And listen, he's in my heart this morning. I pray to God he's in yours. And I can say this morning, he's not. He can be. He wants to be. That's where he wants to live this morning is in your heart and to give you those things. I'm afraid, though, Brother Clyde, there's another word that's, that's living in the hearts and in the minds of a lot of people today. It's not a word you won't find it in the Bible. I mean, you'll find it in the Bible, but it's not, not describing Jesus. Uh, you won't find it written in lots. You won't, if you get Christmas cards from your neighbors and your friends and your loved ones and your relatives, it won't have this word written across that, 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 that card. It, it, it won't be in songs that you hear. It won't be those things. But listen, it's apparent and it's real in the hearts and minds of a lot of people this morning. And that word is fear. Listen, fear has no place in our lives. Amen. Yeah, right. Listen, the Bible says this, fear not. Listen, that's what I want to preach about this morning. As we enter this Christmas season, I want faith hope, joy, peace to fill our hearts and to fill our minds and to fill our lives and not fear. But I'm afraid we're letting fear move in and Where kick all going? those other right. things out. Listen, it's time to kick out fear. It's right. time to, hey, listen, have you ever got a piece of mail and it, it wasn't supposed to be to you and you put it back in the mailbox, you know what they do? They step that thing and they say, return to sender. Amen. Right. Listen, you know where fear comes from? It's not from God. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And listen, right. he's not given us, that fear does not come from God. It comes from Satan this morning. You just take that fear, you send it right back to him with a sign on it that says return to sinner. There ain't no room for it here. Listen, it's time for us to get shed of the fear that we're living in. Fear is a, it's real this morning. And it's probably real in some of our hearts this way. If we're, calm, if we're, if we're absolutely truthful this morning, some of us would have to say, yeah, there's some things that I'm anxious about. There's some things that I fear right now. I hope today after you hear this, after you hear the word that, not my words, but Jesus' words, you will not have fear in your heart. Listen, I want you to take note. If you are fearful, if you have anxiety and you worry about things, listen, don't, don't think that you're alone. We, a lot of us deal with that. 
but not only us, but some of those Bible characters that you read about, them heroes of faith, they right. dealt with it too. I mean, nobody's immune from it. Nobody has immunity to fear. Abraham feared. Listen, he went down into, into Egypt and he took Sarah with him down there into Egypt and he said this, he said, Sarah, tell everybody you're my sister because if they know you're my wife, you're so pretty right. and you're so beautiful, they will kill me and put me in a grave just so they can make you my wife. So tell them you're my sister. You know why he told her that? Because he was fearful for his life. Listen, he was fearful. There was others that were fearful as well during the Bible. Joseph was fearful of, of, of his brothers. There's many that are fearful this morning. Uh, uh, many in the Bible are fearful. Jacob. Jacob was fearful. Who did Jacob fear? Jacob feared Esau. Amen. He was worried about Esau killing him. He was fearful for his life. Moses, when he killed that old that, that, that Egyptian soldier that was whipping that Hebrew child, he killed him and he dug him and put him in the sand. Now listen, what did he do? He said he fled. Do you know why he fled? Because he's scared Pharaoh was going to get him. Amen. He dealt with fear, just like you and I do. But listen, this is what I'm thankful about for them old heroes of faith. And that's why they're over there in Hebrews chapter 11. They found an antidote mm. to, to fear. Amen. Right. Listen, there is an antidote. There is a cure for the fear that's in your life. It's found in Proverbs chapter number 3. Verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Listen, trust, the, the, the antidote to fear is just trust. Amen. Right. You know why we fear? It's because we don't trust and we don't believe. He says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Right. Listen, that's the antidote for fear this morning. Just trust him. I've talked about this a lot in the last two or three weeks, but listen, we need to grab hold of this thing. Listen, we need to grab hold of the trust that we have in Jesus. Trust. And not only a trust, but there's another way that I hit the overcoming fear. I'm going to tell you a little quick story. There was a, a young man, a young preacher, a Scottish preacher. Uh, his name was John. And he, he told the story of when he was younger. As he had to go to school and come back home, where he had to go, he had to, to travel through a very dense forest. Very dark and very scary. And a lot of times when he'd go to town and have to come back home, he'd have to travel through that forest. He got up there into that forest one night. And it's always, you know, the, the dark makes you see different things. It makes you see things that are not there. And uh, as he walked through that forest one night, he was especially scary because it was especially dark. And you know how well you can tell they, they were robber, they was robbers and, and, and monsters and things and, and, and animals that would, would attack in there. So he was very scared and very anxious about going through there. And have you do you ever get the feeling like sometimes in the dark somebody's looking at you? Do you ever have that feeling? Well, he had that feeling as he was walking through those woods that night. It was really dark. And he was coming up and out in front of him. He couldn't see. But he just had a feeling there was something that was moving in toward him. There was something. He could just feel those eyes looking at him. He could just feel them creeping in toward him. And he just knew it was a robber. He just knew it was somebody who was going to take all that he had and maybe even take his life. And then out of the darkness, he heard something say, John. And he, he didn't really understand it. He says, I know they said my name. That robber even knows who I am. And then as he got a little closer, he just stopped in, in fear. And he heard a, another voice. He said this. He said it came out again. It said, John. Is that you? And then he recognized the voice. It was the voice of his father. He said, listen, I know it's dark. I know it's, it's scary out here. He said, I was worried about you, so I just come to meet you where you are. He said, when I heard my daddy's voice and I knew it was him, all my fears Amen. were gone away. Amen. Amen. Listen, this is something else that will help you this morning. It may not be the word of a preacher. It may not be the word of your Sunday school teacher. It might not even be the word of a friend that can calm your fears. But I can tell you, when you hear the word from your Father, I'm right. talking about our Heavenly Father this right. morning. When we hear that word from Him this morning, He can calm those fears and put them away. I pray that we can hear a word from the Father this morning. A word from the Father from heaven calms fears and it takes fears away and replaces that fear, those fears with peace, joy, and love. I'm praying that he'll do that today. I'm, pray, I'm praying this. This was my prayer, Brother Clyde. This morning I was in my study and I began to pray. I said, God, if there's anybody in our midst that is, that is suffering with fear, that is 
is in a battle with fear over something that's going on in their life, over all different kind of things. Listen, we fear all different kind of things. Some of us fear the, the economy. Uh, some of us fear this pandemic. Some of us are in fear for our careers and where, where we're headed after this thing. All these things are, are fears. Others are just fear. Uh, they're just fearful of getting old, amen, and, and growing old and getting gray hair and all these things. Those, those are true fears that people feel. Well, listen, I said this. I said, Lord, I want you to take that fear, and I want you to take it out of their lives, and I want you to replace it with a fruit basket. Mm. Y'all might say, what are you talking about, replace it with a fruit basket? Well, I have fruit baskets on my heart all week long, amen. We've prepared them on, on Wednesday night. We've got them ready for the for the uh, elderly in our community, some of the shut-ins. And I got them to go truck load up and thinking I was going to go deliver them all in about one day's time. It took me two and a half days to get them all delivered. And I still got one to go, amen. So listen, if you ain't got your fruit basket yet, I got it. It's coming, amen. You're watching the line this morning. But listen, you get there, you get the, you, you begin to, to meet and greet with those uh, those elderly, those old saints of our church, and listen, it, it's some of the best times I've had in a long time. But I took them that fruit basket. You say, well, what are you talking about? Jesus replaced their fear with a fruit basket. You know what the Bible says in Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 22, talks about the fruits of the Spirit. He says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against there is such no law. I said, Lord, just replace that. Amen. Amen. Put a fruit Amen. basket in there. I'm talking about give them that fruit of the Spirit, that joy and that peace in their heart. Give them all that they can. And listen, I'm here to tell you this morning, He can do that 100% this morning if you'll just hear it. I want us to look this morning at how these three, there's there's four, actually four instances in this in the story, the Christmas story about uh, those that were appeared to by an angel and uh, received news that Jesus was going to come and make his entrance into the world. In every one of those instances, that, that, that appearance of that angel was met with fear. I want to see how that angel dealt with that fear that was in your heart, how those individuals. Let me just give you one. You can go back and read in Luke chapter number one, the, the, uh, uh, Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. He was in the temple burning incense as it was his duty to do at that time. And the angel appeared unto him. He says, uh, Zacharias, he says, your, your wife Elizabeth, she's going to have a child. She's going right. to conceive in her old age. And she's going to bring a, a son into this world. He's going to be the forerunner of the Savior of the world. He's going to prepare the people's hearts to receive Jesus Christ. And, and he and he said when that angel appeared, he was he was dumbfounded and he was he was absolutely fear in fear of his life because he didn't know what to make of it. And the Bible and, and that angel said this, fear not, Zachariah. He said, I'm bringing you good news. Listen, you're gonna have a son, and you're gonna call his name John. He's gonna be a forerunner. That's one we're gonna we are going we will see. You can go back and read about this. But I wanna focus on the other three times that the angel appeared. I want you to look at this time in our in our text this morning where the angel appeared under Mary. And I want to look at Mary's troubled heart this morning. Mary. Now listen, if you, if you go look and, and study out Mary's life, you'll see Mary was actually a, a, a child, a young, young lady, 14, 15 years old, when she found out that she was going to be the mother of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. She, she got some very heavy news. When there, but if you go study Mary's life, Mary was one of those young ladies. She had it all put together. Listen, Mary was not just some little raggedy Ann girl out here. She was. She had her life put together. She was in order. She had her life set. She said, "Man, I've done everything right, and I've got everything lined up." Look, I want you to look at it. If you look over in verse twenty-seven, it says that she was espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Listen, she had done got his, she had picked her man out, or her parents might have put them together, but she was a spouse. That means she was already engaged. Amen. So she, she had already got engaged. She was going to be married to Joseph. Listen, Joseph was going to be a good husband. He was of the house of David. He was descended from King David. So she was lined up with a good family. She was lined up. She had her uh, wedding ring on. She was a spouse. She was just waiting. For the wedding day. Uh, she had everything together. Not only that, but she she was the girl next door. She was smart. 
She was ambitious. Listen, she had her, her, her plans in order. And even this, it says she was physically pure. Listen, she was she was a good girl, amen. She didn't go out and, and flaunt and, flaunt and, and do all these types of things. It says she had saved herself and made herself pure for her husband. Let me say this, young ladies, if you see this online, if you're here this morning, that's the, the kind of example that you need to follow, amen. amen. There's a lot of examples amen. this day and time that you don't need to follow, but just look at Mary. She kept herself pure and kept herself physically pure for her husband. She was on the right track. Not only does it say she was uh, physically pure, but she was spiritually pure. It says this. It says that she was highly favored, that God looked upon her and highly favored her. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this, this this morning in Sunday school. And listen, this is just the truth. Grace is undeserved favor. It doesn't mean you don't do anything to get it. And grace she found favor or grace in the eyes of God. So she didn't do a whole lot to do it. But I tell you this, I believe this, I believe that she had her life spiritually right. She was looking unto the Lord. You don't get to be the, the, the mother of the Savior of the world without having your life lined up like you're supposed to be. She had also spiritually pure. So she had her, her life all planned out. She seemed to be doing everything right in the, her eyes and the eyes of society. And then God showed up. Hey. Listen, sometimes you'll think you're doing everything right. You've got everything going just like you ought to have it going and how the world tells you to have it going. And God's going to show up in your life and he's going to take your plan and he's going to dump them out. Hey. Amen. Listen, he, took, he showed up in the life of Mary and he took her plans and he made a challenge. To her plan. She had her life all planned out. And, but he came and said this. Listen. She came and this angel appeared. And when she saw him. She was troubled at his sake. She was troubled that she was going to be blessed. And that she was going to conceive. And have a child. But the angel said unto her. Fear not. Fear not. Listen I say to you this morning church. Listen all that you're going through. Don't worry. Listen, don't worry about this pandemic. This thing's going to be all right. Listen, if we have to get it, and if we go through some troubles, we'll come out on the other side stronger right. than we was or not. If it not, if it takes our life, listen, if you know the Lord Jesus Savior, you'll be in a lot better place right. than God right. right now. Listen, just look at it and say, listen, it's going to be all right. We need to stop fearing. We need to stop right. worrying. Good. We need to stop Good. being anxious about what's yeah. going to happen in this world because God is still in control. Yeah. Listen, he's still yeah. on the throne this morning. Yes. We say that all the time, but do we really believe it? Right. Listen, we're not living like we believe he's on the throne. Oh, we're not yeah. living like, yeah. and we're not living and we're not believing right. that, hey, he's in control of this election. That's Listen, right. we're not believing and living like that. We're walking around so, oh, I just hope everything works out. He's working out just like he wants it to. Right. Right. we got to believe it. Great. we got to start right. living that way. He said, fear not. Because what i got for you is going to be good for you in the end. You may not think so right now. But in the end, it's going to work out just right. right. This is what he said. He said, Mary, you're going, you're going to conceive a child, and you're going to call his name Jesus. Hey, He's going man. to be the Savior of the world. Now listen, let's get Mary now. Wow. Mary's got all her, life, her ducks in a row. She's got a husband lined up. She ain't been married yet. But he says, listen, don't fear. I'm about to, you're about to get pregnant and have somebody else's children. Sure. Man, could you? I never saw this until last night as I was looking at this and kind of studying through this. Do you realize what that meant for, for Mary? Yeah. We think, well, that was an easy thing for her to just say, oh, well, you know, I, I'll, I'll do that. She was going from a person that was respected. She was going from a person that looked like she had everything lined up just right to all of a sudden she's going to show up and to the world it was going to look like she's the worst sinner there ever was. Man, Listen, right. she was going to be uh, uh, pregnant out of wedlock, found to be running around. Listen, she was going to have shame go her way everywhere Mary went. They was going to say, hey, there's that woman that was betrothed. Mm -hmm. She wasn't married yet, but she ran around on her husband and went and got pregnant. Oh, she was going to suffer that shame. She was going to be humiliated <laughs> in that day and time. If you got pregnant outside of wedlock, it was a humiliating thing. And God said, look, Mary, I know you got your life all in a row. As long as you do this thing for me because you 
But I'm favorite. I want you to bring Jesus into the world. Mm -hmm. I, I thought about this. We all got our lives worked out. We got it how we think we're going to go, how we want it to go. What if God showed up in your life one day and said, listen, I need you to do something for me, but it's going to be humiliating to you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be shameful for you. It's going to be hard for you to live for the next little while if you'll do this thing for you. But this is what I need you to do. Would we be like Mary? You know what Mary finally said at the end? She heard all that he said. And Mary said this. Behold thy handmaid of the Lord. At whatever thy words are, he says, so shall it be with me. Amen. She said, I'm going to believe it. I'll do it, Lord. Listen, I'll do what you want me to do. Would we be so willing to, do, to, to walk the walk that God wants us to walk? You know what we pray a whole lot of times? We pray this. Oh, Lord, don't let us have abundance in our life. Oh, don't let us have no, no trials and tribulations. Oh, take all those things away. Yet he came and he put all those things in Mary's life. In Mary's life. And Mary said this, Lord, if it's your will, then I want it to be my will. And hey, listen, you know how she got rid of fear? She just let her will line up with his will. You know how you get rid of fear? Let your will line up. Or let his will line up. Line your will up with his will this morning. She challenged. God challenged her plans. And it came out different. Listen, it says this. Mary says, Behold thy handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. What if we would do that? What if God would come and, and say, Listen, I need you to do this. It's going to get you out of your comfort zone. It's going to cause you to do some things. It's going to be, you say, Well, well why, why would he ask me to do that? Well, I want you to know this. The Bible states in Luke 9, 23, that the Christian life is a life of prosperity. Listen, it is a life of prosperity. Jesus said, let him that comes after me deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We need to start bearing our cross. Listen, Jesus will never ask you to do something that he hadn't already done. You say, well, what is he doing? You know all that sin that we keep hidden? And we all got it. I'm just being honest this morning. Well, we all got sin in our life that nobody else knows about. Except me. Come on, and you, break it down. Come on. you know where it's at. It's in your life. And you try and try to get rid of it, but you can't get rid of it. But you know that sin that you think you got hid from everybody else, you ain't got hid from no. And listen, that same sin that you think that you're getting away with, Jesus, when he took that cross and he started up that hill, at Calvary. Listen, all of that hey, sin. Come on, right. Talking about all that old all right. wickedness and that old Good. sin that we hide from everybody else. It was put on him. He took that shame. And when he walked up that road, they were spitting on him. They were throwing rotten tomatoes at him. They was calling and saying, Oh, you imposter and all those things. All that shame and all that humiliation he took upon himself. And when he hung on that cross at Calvary, your shame and my shame and the shame of the whole world was placed upon him his shoulder. And listen, he says, if you'll do that, if I'll do that for you, would you please do some for me? Listen, sometimes we just need to, to take what he has given us, and sometimes it might cost us that, and sometimes it might not. This is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21. It says this, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who you know sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Sometimes he just needs us to Give our best to him right. because he can give our best. He's given his best to us. That's right. My brother this morning, Brother Tim Whaley, he, he sent me that this morning. We text back and forth on Sunday mornings, and he said this. He said, Preacher, give your best this morning because he gave his best right. for you. Boy, shouldn't that be our motto for life? Let's give right. our best for him because he's given our best, his best for us. I got to move this morning. I'm out of time. Now, so we, we see Mary's life. Uh, her, her fears were calm when she accepted the challenge. I ask you this morning, will you accept the challenge to live for God, even if the world says it's not right? Verse 38, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter number 1. The Bible talks about another instance. And I'm going to go really fast through this. It was Joseph. Joseph's scary dilemma. Listen, Joseph had his plan all planned out just like Mary did. And the Bible came by and said this. I, I thought about this. Mary, Mary had sh began to show, had began to show that she was pregnant before the angel showed up to Joseph. You know why we know that? Because the Bible says in Matthew that he was already thinking how he was going to put her away. 
He had already said, listen, he had all these things coming through his mind. And he had a spirit dilemma. Do I put her away privately and, and save her life but make myself look like a fool? Or do I put her away publicly and let everybody know what she's done? But it could cost her her life. What am I going to do? He had this dilemma in his life. It was a scary dilemma that he had. But I want you to look what the what, what it says happened. It says in verse 18, now the birth of Jesus, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise with his as his mother Mary was a spouse of Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example of mine, put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in, in a dream, saying unto him, Thou son of David, listen to this, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The Bible says this, Now that all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did, did as the angel of the Lord had with bidding him, and took him unto his wife, and knew her not, till she was brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Listen, he said, said the same word to Joseph. He said, Joseph, don't be scared to take her as your your child, what is in her is pure. She is still pure. Listen, she, she's conceived, but she's conceived of the Holy Ghost. I was thinking about how that happened. The Bible says the Holy Ghost came and overshadowed her. Could you imagine that? Brother Ever, could you imagine what it felt like to have a Holy Spirit just overshadow? I wish she'd do that this morning. Hey, I wish she'd come in this place and oh, just get on somebody and just overshadow us. Listen, I ain't calling. I, I'm not saying I want you to have a baby. I'm just saying I want you to get to get drinking with the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. And get excited for what God is going to do. Listen, that's what he did. And listen, she was still pure. She was carrying out God's plan. And Joseph said this, Lord, what you said, I believe. Could you imagine this on Joseph? Let me just skip ahead a little bit right here. <laughs> Joseph, God gave Joseph one of the greatest responsibilities a man has ever got. He was to raise Ooh. the Savior of oh. all the world. Ooh. I mean, he was to raise. You know who, who made the son or taught the son how to worship? You know how to taught the son how to do all things and how to honor God? It was the Father. <laughs> He said, Joseph, this is your job. You're going you're gonna to raise my earth son. And on earth, he can be your son. But listen, you're going to show him the way. You, that's the greatest job that, that a man could ever accept. There you go, brother. The greatest job he could ever accept. Listen, you, you fathers this morning, that's the greatest job you could ever have. Right. Raise your child in right. the ways of the Lord. Joseph said, Lord, I'll do it. i got to move forward. Joseph had a scary dilemma, but he had found faith in God, and he done it. The shepherds also shepherds in Luke chapter number 2. They had a fearful announcement. The day the angel of the Lord came upon the shepherds and, and appeared to them. Look, it says in verse 8 of chapter 2, and there were the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone right about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Hey. For behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Wow. Did you see a pattern here of what the angel kept telling her fight? He's like, listen, I know you, you get excited and you're you, you shocked at what's going on and what's happening in this, this appearance of this angel. But there is nothing to fear. That's what he was saying. I got everything under control. Hey. I'm working this thing out to yeah. perfection. This world needs a savior. I'm yeah, sending it into this world. Hey. Listen, even today, he's saying the same thing to you and to me. Don't fear. In this Christmas season, look, in the in the midst of all that we're going through, don't worry. Don't fear. He's in control. Hey. And right. we're working this thing out. He told them old shepherds, and the shepherd said this, we got to go down and see. 
what he's talking about. They followed, they went down, they found that babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and there in that place they worshiped the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords yeah. in baby form. And then this is what they did. They left from that place. Let me read it to you real quick. They left from that place. Verse 17, it says, And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told by them, by the shepherds. You know what they did when they when they went and seen Jesus? They left and they went and told everybody they could see. Listen, there's a Savior down there in Bethlehem. He's born, he's laying in that manger, but he's going to save us from our sins. Listen, they got to tell about him coming, but listen, you know what God has given you and me the, the responsibility to do? Mm -hmm. Tell about him coming again. Amen. Right. Right. It's not here to tell you this morning. The reason, the whole reason why we ain't got nothing to fear, because one of these days that trumpet's going to sound, right. and that same Jesus that came in this manger, that same little baby that comes is going to yeah. come again. But listen, he's not going to come in baby form. He's going to come as the King of Kings, yeah, yes. as the Lord yeah. of Lords, the conqueror of all things. He's going to come, and he's going to get his children, and he's going to take them home. Amen. And we're going home to heaven. You say, preacher, why should I not be worried? Because Jesus is in control, right. and Jesus is coming back. And listen, he might come back tonight. He yeah. might come back before we leave this place today, Brother Clyde. I believe we're as close as we have ever been to him coming back. There's nothing else that has to be done. The world's in bad enough shape. Listen, all the prophecies he's been fulfilled, all he's got to do is say, son, go get my, go get your bride. And he's coming to get us. I want to say this. Are you ready this morning? Hey. Listen, my job is to ask and to, to proclaim that he is coming again. Right. And I'm asking this morning, are you prepared? If he came today, would you go with us or would you be left here alone here in this world alone? You don't have to be left. You can come and you can accept him as Lord and Savior, that's why He came into this world to bring faith, peace, and hope and love into your life. And you can accept Him this morning if you'll just call upon His name and ask Him to save you. Listen, He's preparing us this morning. Are you prepared to come? Come on, Brother Tony. I come this morning. I, I come this morning and, and bring a, a song. We're going to sing a verse of invitation this morning. I, I pray to you this morning. There may be some of you here. But you know exactly what I'm talking about as I talk about fear. you got fear in your heart, fear in your life, you're fearing over things. Listen, there's no need for fear. Just trust in the Lord. Maybe you need to come this morning and ask the Lord to, to grant you that trust and give you that, that power to trust. Maybe you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've never asked him. You've never had that time when you got down and asked Jesus to forgive you, to come into your heart, and to wash you clean. That day can be today if you'll just come and ask him before it's eternally too late. Listen, I don't know what the Lord has put upon your heart, but I want you to obey it. And all that he does, as we stand to our feet, we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to sing a song. I want you to obey it. Maybe you don't have any of that going on. Maybe you just need to come and worship him this morning and say, Lord, you're worthy of my praise today, and I'll worship you in spirit and truth. You just obey. Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the good time of meeting that we've had. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that's, that's been in the midst of us this morning. Let him move this morning, move hearts and minds to obey you and do what you have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Page 357. Page 357. All of you over this morning, if you need to come, just use the field of media. Whatever the Lord's spoken to your heart this morning.
We're going to open the doors of the church for reception of members. You want to come and join the Ephesus Baptist Church? You come at this time as we say. Third. Is there no more condemnation for sin? Is our heart right with God? Does Jesus rule in the temple within? Is our heart right with God? Is our December the 20th, 6 to 8 at night. We're going to have uh, a lot of different stuff. We've got live animals coming. We've got a camel that's going to be here that night, so it's going to be fun. A camel. Yeah. Amen. Come all the way from yeah. Israel. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be here. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but we'll, we'll have him here. But you, if you want to be a part of that, whether it's working or being an actor, we need actors. There's uh, sign-up sheets up here. We'll probably need more than one actor for each place because we'll need you to uh, swap out during that time. You sign up from the. I don't know if he's broke or not. You try if you want to. <laughs> no, it, he's just for show, but uh, he, he is going to be here. But he's anyway, looking forward to that. It's going to be a good time. Tell somebody around the, the community about that. And uh, let them come. We're going to have it where they can drive through for the older folks that don't, may not want to get out. Uh, they'll be able to drive through and see it in the cemetery there. So uh, just um, let everybody know about it. It'll be a good time of fellowship and fun for our church. So don't forget to sign up. Anybody else got a word of mouth before we close? still the nursery sign up. She's still up here on the piano, too. Got a couple people sign up for that. And anybody wants to sign up for that, either sign up here or let Melinda know one of the other. <coughs> and she'll work you in on that. Also, don't forget about the officer and our pastor and family offered the Christmas, Christmas gifts. Plates in the back, use the mission offer plate back there along with the other pies are offering the plate back in the back for that. But just use the mission offer plate for that if you would. If you want to leave your donation for that or go to the give a pie up or mail it in to Mr. Linda to the deal box and just keynote it actually for offering gifts if you don't mind. And don't, the, the nursery sign up, we need more nursery workers, uh, ladies, if y'all would like to, to help, we do need more nursery workers there, so remember those. Anything else? All right, if not, we're going to be dismissed with a word of prayer. Brother Dusty dismisses us today. Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for the message that we've heard today. Lord, I pray that the message that we've received, Lord, just stays fresh in our minds and our hearts, Lord, for the rest of this week, Lord, and just be able to take it out and share it. Lord, I just thank you for all that you've done for us today, Lord. I thank you for meeting with us. Lord, I pray that you should continue to guide us, Lord, to guide this church, uh, that we continue to do your work, Lord, to reach out to us. Lord, I love you. I thank you for all that you've done. Bring us back together safe when we meet back again. And I pray this in your name. Amen.